If you want FPS like this, then follow this guide in basically how to get the most FPS in this game here. Now, my name's Cornell. I'm from Sets Quality. We work with a lot of professional creators and professional gamers. Uh, if you would like to have FPS services, you could visit SenseQuality.com where we can look over your PC or just your whole gaming setup in general to enhance it and increase the performance and your KD as well. So let's get into it here. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to go head over to the in-game settings here. So what we're gonna do is press this little cog wheel here, go into graphics, and you will just follow along uh, with the game settings here. So I would go full screen exclusive, full screen borderless. It actually decreases the amount of performance that you get. So always get full screen exclusive. I'm just using full screen borderless because it just makes it easy to go between stuff. Basically, when it comes to custom frame rate, if you do get over 300 FPS, you can put this on unlimited. If you don't get over 300 FPS, what I would suggest is putting this on your monitor's refresh rate. So mine is 240, so I'll put that on 240. A menu, I'll put it on 60, and out of focus is on 30. That way, my GPU isn't heating up and my CPU isn't heating up while I'm not even using the computer. And that's what causes a lot of dev ears and a lot of problems that a lot of people have. It's because their game is still running at full speed in a main menu when you don't even need your game to run at full speed in the main menu here. So that should help there. And when we scroll down here, you want to have high dynamic range off because uh, that can affect your performance as well. So then we're going to just apply that. We're going to go to render resolution. You want to make sure this is 100 uh, and you want to make sure that your display resolution matches your monitor. So my display resolution is 1080p. It should be if I go full screen exclusive it should be 1440p here so just make sure you do that there and basically we're going to go into render resolution that should be 100 upscaling i like to use fidelity fx cast a lot of gamers and creators at a professional level also likes to use this and i put it preferably at 90. if you are stuck and you cannot switch between any of these what you have to do is turn this off press apply and then turn it back on with fidelity fx and then press apply again and it should work there uh, with anti-aliasing i like filmic smaa two times it just makes the game look better anti-aliasing quality you could set this to whatever you would like but i set it to low video memory scale i set that to 90 texture resolution and texture anatropic quality this is the where you'll see the biggest difference in terms of how the game looks everything else is eh but this is how you make the game look better so if you want a better looking game, you could set these both to normal. If you just want the highest FPS possible, you'd set this to very low and low. And that will make a difference in terms of your performance. But if you just want a better looking game, you could set it to normal, normal, and that's perfectly fine there. Those two settings make, in my opinion, the biggest difference in terms of quality in the game. Nearby level of detail, low. Distance level of detail, low. Clutter draw distance. I'll show you why this has nothing here. That's because we have custom configuration files. So stick around for that one particle level quality you could set that to high if you would like i just set it to low for the most fps possible particle quality level a lot of professional players like to keep this at normal bullet impact sprays you could set this on or off if you want shader quality you could set that to low tessellation off terrain memory this should be at the minimum possible on demand texture streaming this should be off a streaming quality if you are playing warzone then you would want this at normal because you want to see at a farther distance uh, however it takes more fps if you are playing just regular multiplayer i would recommend setting this to low basically what streaming quality is is it renders a farther distance out on normal than on low so if you are just a short range player you're not going to challenge anybody like 100 feet away then i would recommend low if you're a long range player use snipers and everything like that I would recommend normal. I personally set mine to normal. A uh, volumetric quality, I would set this to low. Deferred physics quality, I would set this to off. A uh, water caustics, I would set that to off. Shadow map resolution, very low. Shadows take up a lot of your CPU resources, so it's very CPU intensive. So I don't suggest using this if you want like the highest FPS possible. Screen space shadows off. Spot shadow quality, you used to have to put this on high. I would generally set this to low. Spot cache. I would put this on medium, not high or ultra high. Ultra high and uh, high, it seems to get worse is 0.1% FPS lows, which means that you stutter a little bit more. I would set this to medium, that should be perfectly fine. 
particle lighting you could set this to low or if you want just a more a little bit of more detailed game you can set it to normal ambient occlusion off screen uh space reflections off static reflections off weather grid off all of that stuff it doesn't make the game look really that much better so i would generally tell you to take those off there and video reflex low latency i would do on plus boost depth of field off uh motion blurs off of course and film grain at zero now let's go to view here. You could set your FOV to whatever you would like. I know a lot of professional pro players that use controllers, they like to hover around like 100 to 105. So if you want best aim assist results, you wanna hover around 100 to 105. Field of view, of course, you could do affected. Weapon field of view, you can use wide. A lot of people like that, but default is perfectly fine. First person camera movement, this is 50%. Third person camera movement, this is 50% right there. And then let's go into interfaces. So we're gonna scroll down here and basically the first thing that we want to turn off is this skip introduction movie you want to turn that on uh, we want parallax effects off uh you want telemetry uh to be on for your fps counter and that should be good and then color customization this is personal preference but i know a lot of professional gamers that like filter too and you could set this color filter target to world the world intensity set that to 100 and then hud this is personal preference you could either leave this on default or you could use that trinotopia which i personally like and that should be perfectly fine there once you're finished doing that if you do use controller you can head over to controller here and you want to disable gravity vector and gyro behavior because that can affect your overall aim assist here so you don't want anything to affect that if you want the best controller movement and just controller aim assist possible i would suggest using dynamic as a lot of controllers find that very good and a lot of professional players are on dynamic here so i would definitely suggest that and that should be basically it for the actual game itself now there's a whole bunch of stuff out of the game that you have to change to get the max fps possible so let's head out of the game here and let's do that first let's start with normal window function so let's do graphic settings you want to make sure that hardware acceleration is disabled if you're having any kind of dev earring problems or any kind of errors just disable hardware acceleration and that should help here especially if you have a very very good cpu hardware acceleration sometimes for windows can cause errors or dev errors so if you are having those dev errors disable it if you have it on and it's not causing any dev errors and you don't get dev errors much then keep it enabled here then you would just have to type in game mode and you would turn game mode on I just have it off because this is my streaming PC. Xbox Game War, you could turn that off as well. Background apps, you would turn that off and that should be perfectly fine. And then we'll head over to the NVIDIA control panel here. Now with the NVIDIA control panel, you just have to change a couple of things here. So the first thing is set up G-Sync. If you want a smooth looking game, then enable G-Sync. If you want just the lowest input delay possible, or if you use Elgato, you want to disable G-Sync here. Um, so G-Sync, it adds a little bit of latency, not too much, but it makes your game look smooth. Some people like it some people don't in terms of fps gaming i wouldn't recommend it here but you can use it if that's what you like now if we go to manage 3d settings uh we have to do threaded optimization you want to make sure that's on you want to make sure texture filtering quality is on high performance you want to make sure shader cache size is 100 gigabytes uh you want to make sure power management is on prefer max performance and that should be all good there you don't really have to make much changes over there then you can go to change resolution here and in change resolution you want to make sure that you're on a monitor that you're actually using for gaming this is the monitor here that i'm using and you want to make sure that the resolution matches that your monitor's resolution and your monitor's highest refresh rate here so as you can see mine matches perfectly fine and that is perfectly fine there now what you want to do is go to adjust desktop color settings and this is personal preference. Uh, a lot of people like to change it to what they like. Note that if you're looking at any kind of YouTube videos for these, your monitor makes a huge difference in terms of what actually looks good in these adjust desktop color settings here. So what I would suggest is first, make sure that these are default, change how you want your monitor to look in game, which looks absolutely amazing uh, and change your monitor settings first. And then on top of your monitor settings, change these adjust desktop color settings to make it look even better so first monitor settings then adjust desktop color settings and then you should be good there so that's going to be pretty good so what you could do is change digital vibrance i personally like a lot of digital vibrance to 75 gamma to 1.11 uh, contrast to 55% and brightness to 52% just to add a little 
brightness there and that should make the game look absolutely amazing especially with those color filters that i provided you before in the game there it's gonna look absolutely beautiful the next thing is basically the nvidia profile inspector so with this you have to be careful here i'm gonna link how to use like these tools down below the nvidia profile inspector i'll link where you can download it here what you're gonna do is you're gonna type in call of duty modern warfare in the profiles here and you're going to make sure that this little thing right here is checked. And then you're going to scroll down to where it says unknown. What you're going to look for is BA, BB, and FF, uh, these profiles. Now, you can see that these profiles says 23 for me. So that's how I can, you know, easily detect that these profiles are the right ones. The BA, BB, and the FF all says 23 profiles. So this is going to enable resize bar in the game. So what you could do is you could scroll down, put this one on 01 scroll down put this one on zero one and then for the ff you're going to scroll down and you're going to put that on on the times four thousand or the first option here then what you're going to do is hit apply changes and what that's going to do is enable resize bar within your game here now you got to make sure that resize bar is enabled on your actual pc but if you do have it enabled on your pc and in your bios then you should be able to enable it for this game here and that should boost your fps just a tad bit there now let's head over to basically making changes in the config file so what you're going to do is you're going to scroll over to documents you're going to scroll to call of duty players if you do have a player's beta here you want to delete that immediately you want to go to players you want to go to options.ca 22 that cst then you right click and edit with whatever notepad that you use and that should be good and i'm going to show you exactly what to change so the changes and i'll leave this also within the link down below to my google drive uh the changes are basically for async compute you want to turn that off you want to make sure that the texture filter quality is at texture filter linear for this is optional changes you don't really have to change these the corpse culling threshold this is 0 0.5 and the clutter max this is just a hundred here so if you make those changes you should see a slight fps increase as well and i personally like how the game looks like with this as well you want to make sure the skip introduction movie is there you want to make sure that, that is most definitely true if you watch it a thousand times if you like to see intro movie go ahead and leave it on but i like to just skip that entirely and the threaded count now this is where it gets a little complicated here the threaded count for handling the job queue now when they say thread count, they actually mean how many cores or gaming cores that you actually have. So for example, how you would do this is on Intel, you can use around six cores and that should be perfectly fine. On Ryzen, it gets a bit more complicated here. So Ryzen's, you could think of it as two CPUs in one if you have more than eight cores. On Ryzen, the rule is half of your cores with the minimum being, let's say four. Uh, so if I have a 5950X, which is 16 cores, I would want to put this at eight cores. If I have a 5900X, which is 12 cores, I would want to put this at six cores. So it can only use one side of my Ryzen chiplet. And if I have a 5800X 3D and this has eight cores, you can honestly leave this to six cores here. So basically the minimum is gonna be four. However, I would honestly recommend six being your minimum here. So if you have an eight core, you would put it at six. If you have a 5900X, which is a 12 core, you would put it at six. If you have a 16 core, you would put it at eight because that's half. Now with Intel's, you don't have to worry about any of this. Intel, you just use six or you could use seven and that should be perfectly fine. You don't have to worry about any of this for Intel. Now for Intel's, the only thing that you have to worry about is a 3900K, for example, this has 24 cores. However, the cores aren't real. There's only eight performance cores. And then there is, I believe, uh, 16 efficiency cores. You don't want your game using the efficiency cores, so you will put yours at seven or six to seven core count and it really doesn't matter the six to seven it doesn't make that much of a difference honestly if i was you i would just leave it at seven and you should be perfectly fine but for 3900ks you want to make sure or any kind of new intel chiplet you want to make sure that you're only using performance cores to game you don't want to use all 24 cores because these aren't real cores here 
their efficiency cores, which is not meant to really game on. Uh, so as long as you follow that rule, you should be perfectly fine here. Now, the next thing that you want to do is DDU your driver. And to this date, the best driver that I've had so far, which is in that folder that I'm telling you guys about, everything's in here for you guys to take and improve your gameplay, is if you go into DDU here, you should see the 526.98. This is the most stable driver that I've been on so far. So if you want stability, this is the driver for you. For DDU, basically you wouldn't run it as an administrator on just your general windows. What you wanna do is unplug your network and I'll have a video about this. You want to pull up your uh, safety mode. So what you're gonna do is hold down shift. You're gonna hold the start button. You're gonna click on power. You're gonna click on restart. And then from restart, it should give you a few prompts here. So from that prompts, let's say we call it the blue screen. We're gonna go to advance. We're gonna go to troubleshoot, I believe. And then you are going to go to safe mode. And then from safe mode, you're gonna restart PC and it's gonna ask you, what do you wanna do? And you're gonna enter four and that way you'll be in safe mode there when you're in safe mode that's when you can use this ddu to uninstall basically your current driver so you would click on this select device type gpu you click clean and restart and once it restarts itself you're going to be on a pc with no graphics drivers on it that will affect you and then you could install your new driver which i left in just this folder here or the ddu folder which is perfectly fine so that is going to provide you just with just the maximum fps possible if you want and the maximum stability possible for sure and that is pretty much it so basically you would just go into your graphic settings you would change everything about what we said so far you would go into your nvidia inspector you would change the nvidia control panel you would change just the window settings that we've uh, gone through so far and that is pretty much it guys so if you would like any additional help or additional fps uh you could always go to sensequality.com at sensequality.com we basically put you with a one-on-one -on -one tech which will solve any of your issues or show you how to enhance your setup to the maximum performance here and maximum quality and if we can't increase your fps you can have your money back here so i hope that helps guys make sure you like and subscribe if you want more videos like this but i hope that helps and i hope you have a wonderful rest of your day here peace out